Right now, uh, we're going to be uh, speaking with Peter Askham. Uh, of course, the next festival of emerging artists. I do believe this is their 10th season, and I find that hard to believe, but I'll find out if that's true or not. Good morning, Peter. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's great to be back talking to you, and uh, it's great to not be COVID rained out this year. <laughs> We're so excited to be back. Now, is this the 10th season? This is the 10th season. It's it's hard to believe that, that uh, we've been here at Music Mountain for that long, and uh, it's it's just turned into something really, really special, and I always love talking to you about it when we're here. Yeah, it was 10 years ago when Nick Gordon introduced me to you and, uh, and talked about the next festival, and now not only uh, at Music Mountain, but uh, I also understand uh, that you're also going to be at another location uh, close to us, and that is over in Pine Plains at the Sissing Theater Guild as well. That's right. Yeah, this is the first year that they're going to be presenting us. We're doing two concerts this coming week. The first is that one, uh, which is on June 3rd at the Stissing Center, and that's a great uh, evening of solo and chamber music. And then the following day, we are playing at Music Mountain with a string orchestra and Pamela Z, who's an amazing, an amazing new music artist. And maybe I can just uh, remind listeners about what we're about. Absolutely. So we're, the, we're, we're the next Festival of Emerging Artists. This is the 10th season. And this is a program for young classical musicians who are on the brink of great careers to come from all over the world to our little corner of uh, Northwest Connecticut and uh, perform new music, music of living composers. And so this year we have commissioned all new works for our Music Mountain concert. We have people coming in from as far away as Finland and Mexico, and all of the composers will be here to share in the premieres of all their new works. So it's really exciting. It's the next generation of classical music happening right here. You know, we're so lucky in our area. Uh, your addition 10 years ago to an area where, like at Hotchkiss School during the school year, now that things are getting back to normal, once again, mm -hmm. the students get exposed to world-class musicians, and, and we get to mm -hmm. see those students perform. Uh, the, the Chamber Music Festival put on by Yale in Norfolk, which is getting back to normal this year, does mm -hmm. the same things. It brings uh, incredible artists uh, to rising future stars. I, I compare what you do uh, with, with the artists to what Salisbury Winter Sports Association does. We are so lucky around here every winter when they bring in uh, the ski jumping. The ski mm -hmm. jumpers that we see eight, nine years, ten years down the road, they're jumping in the Olympics. They're jumping in major mm -hmm. ski jumping. And with what you do with these with these young musicians is expose them to the type of program and intense uh, learning and and then have a concert, which down the road we're going to see them performing either as uh, solo acts or with major with major orchestras. Absolutely. And, you know, what we really try and be is a kind of what, what I call 360-degree organization. So we're preparing them kind of musically to be leaders in the musical field and to kind of show the way forward with music. But we, we're also preparing them as you know, people who have to exist in this crazy business that we have. So we have somebody coming in from Houston to do career coaching and talk about the future of classical music and music in a larger picture. We have um, composers working with directly with the players on their music. We have like everything that you need to be to be a musician these days, which is basically everything. <laughs> we call them uh, portfolio careers. It's kind of a euphemism for like, you have to do it all. Um, we have we have people coming in to work with them and prepare them and show them, you know, all of the things that you need to be aware of and able to do to survive and thrive in uh, in this in this business. And uh, I think that's really that's something that's really missed a lot. I mean, you can be a wonderful musician, but if you don't know how to kind of get work and keep work and engage the community and do education and be you know, kind of a thought leader, um, then, you know, that's that makes it tough. I think what makes it even more important for musicians is really if you're a musician and you're you're pushing you you're like a sponge and you, you soak in all this experience and so by the time uh, you go out on your own, you just have a wealth of knowledge and experience and confidence that's been soaked in. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, after 10 years, now we're seeing the, 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 the first um, class that we had come through here. They're just doing amazing things in the world, you know, teaching at conservatories and doing concerts at Carnegie Hall. And, uh, it's just amazing to see. I mean, that's what I feel like job is, to, is to prepare them to be incredibly successful and, you know, kind of show the, show the rest of us old fogies uh, the way forward. So let's talk about that. Uh, Ten years in, uh, has the program evolved like you would have wanted it to, or has it far exceeded your expectations in the, in the, in the evolution of the next festival? You know, it's really interesting. It's far, far exceeded my expectations. So uh, when I started it, the very first year, I started it more of as a, as a social experiment than a musical festival. I, I wanted to start something where it was about the music, it was about the right reasons for doing the music, it was about treating people well, treating people with respect. Uh, we had a policy from the very beginning that it was strictly pay what you can. So, you know, make me an offer and I'll raise the, re- the rest of the money to make up the difference. And so it started very, very humbly, and I didn't know if it would work. <laughs> In fact, I was pretty sure it wouldn't, but I, I wanted to give it a try. I cared so passionately about these young artists. And then so it grew from one week at Music Mountain. Now we're at two-week festival. We're one week here. And then one week in New York City, working with composers and choreographers and playing at major New York venues. And um, during the pandemic, we really grew and adapted right away from the last week of February 2020. We were working, doing international workshops um, and bringing in artists to talk to these young musicians, bringing in people who are specialists in recording at home or video streaming, or if you want to manage your budget in the time of COVID as an artist, here's somebody that you can meet with and talk to. And so trying to, to kind of be that universal support. And it grew into something. Our, we did a virtual festival last year where we had participants in nine time zones that were collaborating in real time. So we had uh, somebody in Australia waking up at 5.30 in the morning and somebody in Belgium going to bed at 3.30 in the morning uh, to just participate and feel that sense of community and that sense of experimentation and making something new. So, in, you know, kind of in answer to your question, nobody saw the pandemic coming, yeah. and it was kind of horrible in lots of ways, but it was also um, a way, it was an opportunity to show that there's resilience and creativity in the way that this this. Uh, art form can evolve. Well, that is one of the things that came out of the pandemic is that every business that uh, that had to adapt, adapted and learned new techniques and better techniques that they can still utilize after the pandemic. Absolutely, is gone. absolutely. Uh, but you know, I, lo- I look, I look at from uh, from that introduction at Music Mountain to now, where people in our area get to see you actually uh, a little easier because, like you said, on Friday, June third, at six o'clock, you'll be at the Stissing uh, Center, which is in Pine mm-hmm. Plains, New York, which is open about a year and a half, two years now, and is uh, they're doing amazing things there. And mm-hmm. then on Saturday at 6 p.m., the next Festival of Emerging Artists, the orchestra with uh, fe- featuring Pamela Z, will be at Music Mountain at Gordon Hall. And as you said, you, you can go to the website, nextfest.org, uh, and uh, you can uh, get the details. And, and as you say, for people to, to see these concerts and these events, uh, basically it's pay as you wish. Yeah, that's right. Since the beginning, we're, we've been about making sure that, that money is not an object it's not an obstacle for either the participants or for the audience. So it's uh, strictly pay what you can. We're happy for whatever anybody can provide. We're excited to share this. Um, and there's a lot more information about the festival and the events on the website, which is next, N-E-X-T hyphen fest, F-E-S-T dot org. So next hyphen fest dot org. Um, and, you know, come see the next festival of emerging artists. We're emerging uh, into kind of something really, really exciting in this post-pandemic time, doing a program of all premieres at uh, Music Mountain and an evening of chamber music at the Stissing Center. Super exciting. All right. Peter, it's great to speak to you again, and uh, I'm sure people are going to love to see you on the 3rd at the Stissing Center and the day after that at Music Mountain uh, once again. Uh, great to speak to you again, and I look forward to many, many years. Thank you so much, Marshall. It's great to talk to you. I've missed it. All right. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.
Uh, that is the next festival of emerging artists. Once again, you get two shots at it, uh, two slightly different shots, on Friday, June 3rd at 6 p.m. at Chamber Music at the Stissing Center in Pine Plains, and then Saturday, June 4th at 6 p.m., the next festival of emerging artists orchestra featuring Pamela Z. Uh, more information at nextnext-fest.org. On the web, you get all the details there.